Hey, it's Rob, welcome to Axel's Garage. All right, we're trying out the mic again, this wireless mic thing, here it is. And I know it was kind of loud in the last couple of videos, so I turned the dials down. It's got two dials, one on the thing that I'm wearing and one on the thing the video camera's got, and I don't know what those dials do, but I turned them both down a little bit, and maybe you won't hear me breathing as heavy. Anyway, we're out here with the Big Dummies K5 Blazer and we're gonna start doing some work on it before he comes home for spring break and wants to use it and it drives like crap because he didn't tell me that it it just it's a mess anyway we're gonna get started on the rear because we got snow coming in tonight so I'm gonna see if I can get the rear brakes done at least before the snow hits now this truck here um, we bought it a year ago it's actually a year and a couple months now and we really haven't done a whole lot to it, we're starting to, and we're gonna do the rear brakes. I didn't even check the brakes to see whether they're good or not. We're just replacing everything. We're gonna replace the drums, we're gonna replace the brake shoes, we're gonna replace uh, the spring hardware kit. And everything that we're using on the truck, I'll put in the description below a link where you can get quality brake parts. I'll also put a link in the description below on the couple of specialty tools we're gonna use. Now you don't necessarily need those specialty tools. You can get away with some needle nose pliers or vice grips or some other kind of pliers and screwdrivers to get the springs off and the clips off. It is easier with the tools and not very expensive and there's a link in the description below for everything you need to do this brake job. So I'm gonna move the camera, I'm gonna jack the truck up, take a wheel off, it's rear drum brakes. They're drum brakes. So for all the millennials out there that are screaming, ah, drum brakes, what's a drum? They're really very simple. They work very well on the rear of, of cars and trucks. There's no, my my 14 year old, he was 14 yesterday, little Steve-O, he said, uh, why don't you convert it over to disc brakes because that's all the kids hear about it. Yeah, let's put disc brakes on it, convert it to disc. It's not necessary. This is a you know 5,000 pound truck or so. It's got big front discs and it's got big rear drums. It stops fine when the brake systems are, are operating normally. There's no need to convert this over to disc brakes unless you're doing some serious uh, off-road where you're really heating the crap out of the brakes. Normally speaking, the drum brakes are great. Drum brakes are not hard to do. Everybody thinks they're really hard to do. Um, real easy, we'll show you how to do it. Uh, and all the millennials could stop screaming, I got a call with drum brakes, I don't know what to do. You know how many phone calls I've gotten from people? I, I, this guy wants me to do brakes on his car, and I said yes, and, and it, it did drum brakes in the back. So what? Just do the brakes. It's easy. Let me move the camera. All right, so with the wheel off, you got your brake drum. They're usually rusty. It doesn't mean that they're bad. It's just it's because it's bare steel. They don't paint them when you get a brake drum. And this should slide off. It's not sliding off because there's the, the brake shoes are worn into the drum. There's two reasons. The brake shoes themselves can be worn into the drum so that there's a ridge on the back side of the drum stopping you from getting it off. Or it could be rusted on the flange, your axle flange where the studs go through. Uh, to the drum itself, it could be rusted there. So a couple shots with a hammer and you should be able to get it off. We're replacing the drums, so we don't care about them. Usually you would use a, a dead blow or something so that you don't damage the drum or, or crack it or chip a, a piece off of it. Um, but I'm gonna go get a hammer, we're gonna give it a couple wax and hopefully it'll come off. So what you really wanna use is a dead blow hammer. Um, this way you don't chip it. Like I said, it, you don't need to get these any kind of specialty tools for this. But if you want to get the dead blow hammer, I'll put a, a link to this down. You can get a cheapo Harbor Freight. You can buy one on Amazon. But there we go, a couple shots. And they come right off and look at that. A spring fell out with it. All right. The inside of the drum. Let's check and see if I'm on. Inside of the drum. Really doesn't look too bad. It's got a little bit of a ridge on it. Um, the only way you check these drums to see if you got enough meat on them is to measure the diameter. You can get these turned at a machine shop and, and resurfaced. They have a max diameter printed on them. The machine shop will measure the diameter and then see how much if you have to turn them. We elected to get new drums. And what we did with the new drums was put a coat of preventative paint on them just so that they don't get rusty and you don't see rusty drums through the wheel. All right, so here's your drum setup. You got a shoe here and a shoe here. 
and this spring operated the adjuster one of the springs for the adjusters that fell off and that will stop the drum brakes from self-adjusting the drum brakes have a self-adjust mechanism in them where when you back up and apply the brake a little bit if there's slack it'll adjust to the click and they'll always be adjusted for you all right so at this point we're going to disassemble so now you have some springs you got a spring that goes across here you're supposed to have a spring that goes across here maybe that's this spring maybe it wasn't the adjuster spring no it wasn't this spring is supposed to be across here like this all right, so you got your two upper springs. You got a spring going along the side. This is for your parking brake. You got a spring on the bottom here above your adjuster. And then you have these two clips here, which actually hold the shoes to the backing plate itself. Now, for the two clips on the side, there's the specialty tools that I'm talking about. And these are just sort of little wrenches that you put over the the caps there to push in and turn because they're like a half turn and they come out there's two different size ones they're real inexpensive all right you also have a pair of brake spring pliers these pliers are designed to grab the brake spring they also have a little uh, doohickey there to get the spring off I'll show you how that works and a little doohickey there to get the spring on inexpensive I'll put a link in the description below and then you have your uh, spoon they call it and what this does is this will adjust the brakes with the drum on and we'll show you uh, how all that works like I said you don't need all these tools you can substitute pliers and screwdrivers for it it's just easier with the tools you also don't need to replace the drums like we're doing we want to replace the drums because we want the big dummy to, to have a fresh start with this truck as we go along so we're replacing everything so you got your shoes that you need to replace and you also have all these springs and stuff now this truck is 28 30 years old when it's an 89 so it's pretty old these springs are probably the original so what we did was we went out and we bought a hardware kit and in the hardware kit they give you all these little parts new and it was like 10 bucks on Amazon and even on new, newer cars that have drum brakes the hardware kits are anywhere from 10 to 20 dollars for all the hardware so it's a it's a peace of mind thing and we chose to get the hardware kit also so now with this brake spring should be actually hooked in there and then up around here See how easy it was for me to put that on? It should actually have more tension, and it doesn't. Probably because either the spring's worn out, or it could be that these brake shoes are mounted backwards. And that's the one thing about brake shoes that have different length. You can see the, the brake material on this shoe is longer than the brake material on this shoe. Well, the rule of thumb that I was always taught was to BOB, it is big on back. And the big shoe, the longest shoe, goes on the back of the vehicle, and the front shoe goes on the, uh, the shorter shoe goes on the front of the vehicle, because the big shoe is supposed to be your primary shoe, and this is supposed to be your secondary shoe or a floater shoe, they call it. So when we reinstall, we're going to put the big shoe on the back and the short shoe on the front. Guys that haven't done or aren't familiar with drum brakes, it's always a good idea right here, especially now with smartphones. Just snap a picture of the setup so that if you get have a little confusion, you can always refer back to the to your picture of where exactly the springs go. Another trick to do is just do one side at a time, and you can always look at the other side to find out where all your stuff goes. It's just the other side is the same, just, just a mirror image, it's backwards. But pretty much it's the same. The problem with, you know, doing it like it was on there is if the guy before you didn't do it right, then you're not gonna do it right again. So like in this situation where the shoes are reversed, uh, you have to know just a little bit or just do a little research. All right, so now getting the springs off, you know, you saw how loose that one was. This, um, I used the wrong end. This little doohickey here on the end of the brake shoe pliers is actually to get the spring. So you put it on, you turn it, and it pops off like that. The spring is completely shot. And then what I like to do is I like to lay them out on the ground sort of in the position where they should be going. All right, now we got that one off. Now this spring hooks onto this long bar, which is your brake adjuster. Uh, not your adjuster, your parking brake mechanism. So you just have to fish it out of your parking brake mechanism, which is there. This gets reused. I don't believe that's in the new spring kit. All right, and when you got your two primary springs off, the easiest thing to do then is to get these little 
I'll call them hold down springs. I don't know exactly what they're called, but you just, they, they got a pin that goes through them and comes out the back. So you hold the pin in, you give it a little pressure, you turn it, and the spring comes out. There's usually a little cup or washer, right? And there's your, the pin that it hooked onto. And you can see how that goes. That it goes through the spring and then it just turns a quarter of a turn and it locks in under the pressure of the spring. All right, and what I like to do is just put these exactly how they were in and lay them out with my other stuff so I know exactly where it goes. Now this shoe here is sort of free except it's hooked on the bottom on one spring on the bottom, but you can flap it down and get it out of the way and unhook it from that last bottom spring like that. And here's the shoe that should have been, like I said, on the other side. All right, down on the bottom here, this is your adjuster spring. And it went in just like that. And the orientation of this is important because this spring rides right above that star wheel on the adjuster. So I'm gonna put it down in the right direction. And then this is your star adjuster now. This is real tight to turn. And this is what adjusts. And this needs to be lubricated and needs to turn easy because this is what turns on these little teeth and on a little, a little lever there, rides on these teeth and that's what adjusts it every time you back up. If it'll grab the next tooth, if it's one enough where it'll grab the next tooth, it'll click to the next tooth and it'll bring the brake shoes out which keeps them constantly adjusted to the right, um, the right position. So. I know that the star on this star adjuster goes towards the long spot on the spring. So there's no confusion and I'll just make a mental note it goes towards the rear. And I'm going to put it over here because we're going to take this over to the bench and use the uh, wire wheel and clean it up real good. Clean those threads out, re-lube them so that that operates real nice. Now we got this side here. Now this side's a little more difficult because it's got the parking brake adjuster in it. But it's basically the same thing. You're going to turn your quarter turn spring. All right, and get your, your spring out. All right, and I'm gonna put the spring on that side with the pin and, and you pull the brake out. Now there's a bar that goes above the axle, okay, right across. And this bar you're gonna reuse. A new spring is gonna come in the spring kit, but let's leave the old spring on there so that we know what direction it goes. And we'll put that bar in the right direction, right in the middle. All right. Okay, now this is your adjuster mechanism. This is the, the lever that, that rides on that star adjuster. All right, it's got a little spring on it that goes to the inside of the, the brake shoe itself that rides right like that. And it's got a spring up here, which hooks to another spring. All right, and this is gonna be reused. There's probably uh, a new spring for here in the kit, but we're just gonna put it, again, right where it belongs so we know. And now the only thing we have left is this shoe, and this shoe is stuck on because it's got the parking brake cable and the parking brake lever attached to it. And it's only attached right at the top up here, right? It comes through a hole in the brake pads and it's got a little um, E-clip. That's what they call an E-clip. It's a little retaining clip. You're gonna get it off with a real small flat blade screwdriver. Just make sure that retaining clip doesn't go flying because you're gonna need it to put the lever back in the new brake shoes. If it doesn't come in the parts kit or if you didn't buy a parts kit, you need that. So I'm gonna go get a little screwdriver. That's the only tool I forgot. And pull them out. These tools you can throw out of the way because you're not gonna need them until assembly time comes. Let me go get that little screwdriver, we'll pull that clip out, and then I'll show you how you prep your area. All right, so you got your little E-clip, usually a, a real small flat blade screwdriver will get in there, and it will, and just pull it out. Make sure it doesn't go flying, they have a tendency sometimes to fly. And there's your little clip, put that aside, and sometimes the lever will need a little motivation getting out of the brake shoe. 
that's in there real tight. Nothing really should be that tight. So whether it's rust buildup, who knows? All right, that's proving very difficult to get out. So let me see what we could do here. did there was slide the lever off of the end of the brake cable which is fine it's just a spring-loaded uh, cable pretty self-explanatory and we could go inside and use a punch and the workbench to help us separate this and while we have it out we'll wire brush this and clean this up all right and we're also going to go inside on the, the wire wheel we're going to unscrew this all the way just note that uh, this one is reverse thread See, I'm actually tightening, turning to the right to get it off, right? You clean these threads up, and this top also comes off, and you clean out that, clean here, and you can lube it with a little white grease. You can lube these threads with either anti-seize or white lithium grease also. I usually use white lithium grease on all the brake parts. All right, so that stuff is going to go inside, and now you have your backing plate. All right, what I like to do for the backing plate... is to get some brake parts cleaner and before you start that I should say just check your wheel cylinder make sure you have no seepage it should be dry if you have any kind of greasy seepage around these rubber boots then you got to replace that wheel cylinder and you can either rebuild them or you can buy replacements um, it's easy enough to buy the replacements um, some vehicles this little thing comes off I don't know if this one does or not could be just rusted in place there. All right. And you're going to spray it all down with brake cleaner. And what I like to do is take a, a brush and get in there with a, a wire brush and clean everything off really good. All right. Take special note of this one, two, three, four, five, six. There's six spots on either side where the brake shoe actually rubs against as it operates. And you want to make sure you get those six spots completely clean because we're going to put a little lube on there because sometimes you ever hear a brake drum call when they put their foot on the brake, they get a little tiny squeak. And it's just, it's, it's not the brake surface squeaking like when you got squeaky brakes. It's a mechanical squeak, and that's where the squeak comes from. So you make sure you clean those, those pads good, all right? If there's any flaky rust, you want to get all that out. And then you can wash all the residue off again with the brake parts cleaner. Let me just see here. That does come up. We'll clean that up also with our other stuff. Give it a little. All right, now we got everything clean. We'll go prepare our new parts. All right, so that was the disassembly. Um, now that everything's cleaned up and I got that backing plate area clean with the brake clean and the wire brush, what I'm going to do, and just because, because I have an illness, and it's an old truck, so you want to... Um, 
you know, I really want to protect the longevity of it. I think this is a kind of truck that we might keep forever. Um, you know, the big dummy, it's his first car. And I know that when I got my first K5 and everybody always has a, a soft spot for their first square, um, you want to keep it forever because I let mine go real cheap many years ago and I wish I had it back. So we want to keep this thing good. So what I'm going to do, just like I did with the Jeep in a video a few months ago, um, completely not necessary and related to the brake job, but while we're in here and we got everything apart, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some degreaser um, in a bucket with a uh, with a, a nice long scrub brush, and I'm going to scrub the inside of the wheel well up. Um, I'm going to get the side of the chassis. I'm going to get everything I, I could sort of easily paint in this area, including the backing plate and maybe the rear end right up to the uh, to the leaf spring mount and I'm going to scrub it all down, let it dry out good, and then hit it with some protective paint. I like to use the POR15 or POR15 in the aerosol. Give it a nice coat of uh, chassis black. This way it, um, it'll look nice and it'll add a little bit of protection, a little rust protection and longevity. You could use chassis saver, you could use rust oleum, you could use whatever you want. But if you can clean off that flaky rust, maybe hit it with a wire brush anywhere where it's flaking and put some kind of either a uh, rust converter, rust encapsulator, or some kind of, you know, POR paint like I use, um, it'll add some years to the longevity of this truck. And that's what we're going to do. So that's going to be it for this video. I'll continue once I get it all cleaned up, painted, and ready to go. We'll make a second video, which is the installation of the rear drum brakes. Like I said, real easy. Everything we're going to buy and use in this little project, I'll put in the description below. Um, do it yourself, guys. Don't pay somebody to do this stuff. That's it today from Axel's Garage. Hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, thumbs up. Come on, the button's right down there. You guys are always afraid to thumbs up. Comment. Let me know how this mic is doing now that I turn those dials down just a little bit. Um, if you think I should turn it down a little bit more, let me know. I, I don't know what the dials do, but I did turn them down so that you don't hear me huffing and puffing as much, especially when it's cold out, you tend to huff and puff like that. But that's it today from Axel's Garage. As always, thanks for watching.